Today, we're going to get into Pepe and Penelope. So Pepe Le Pew, Penelope the cat, or Le Cat. And uh, we're going to compose, we're going to watch a Pepe Le Pew film, and then we're going to compose a scene of our own. And it's actually going to be the reverse. And Scott, I cannot remember for the life of me which cartoon it was that Penelope played the reverse role when he got like doused with do you remember? I can't, dude. I tried I, watch. I don't remember right offhand. I don't either. And I tried looking it up and then like speed watching stuff and that didn't work. So we're going to do a scene where Penelope is dumping perfume all over Peppy and like loving eyeballs, uh, you know, because she's now after him. And then Peppy's just going to be this drenched cat, essentially, this drenched pole cat, if you will. So that's going to be our custom scene where we're going to use and we're going to sketch a little bit um, after we watch the film. We're going to sketch real simple uh, Peppy and Penelope just to kind of get their body sh shapes down so that we can understand how to block the scene. And then we're going to switch over from regular paper to I've got black paper. So I'm going to be working on I think I put it on a thing. I'm going to be working in black or dark tone paper and then we're going to start working colored pencil. So getting our initial lines down and then go ahead and starting to work with colored pencil and building our building our image on that. So as that is the, it is Ben's day. You're right. Thanks, Scott. Um, oh, thanks, T. Sorry, T started that. Ben's day, Wednesday. Um, and by the way, T, I saw your red dot piece. It's on the site. Very nice. Um, what are we doing? Sorry, you did not hear. All right, Nathaniel. So Sophie, what's up, dude? Um, here's what we're doing, a little lay of the land, as more people are jumping on. Um, uh, yeah. I, I know the one where they, um, where they, uh, switch places. I believe it was really sent. Do you have that, Scott? Can, you don't have that one? Is really sent? I'm gonna have to write that down. Thanks to my handy guide. Yes. <laughs> nice. That is a handy guide. All right. So oh, and um yes. I believe the one we're watching is for sentimental reasons. Yes. It was um it won Chuck Jones's first Oscar. You are correct. Oliver is on point today. Thank you for the help, sir. So um here's what we're gonna do to give a little lay of the land for everybody jumping on. And if you just heard me say this, we're gonna go stick with me for round two. So we're gonna watch for sentimental reasons. And then the whole idea behind today and composing using uh, our own scene, using classic Looney Tune characters in like a something that makes sense, you know, with, with that, but it's still humorous. We're going to use the characters uh, of Peppy and Penelope, and then we're gonna kind of reverse the roles. So it's gonna be where Penelope is dumping perfume all over Peppy, which makes them smell fantastic now. And then she's all about the lovey, you know, it's just fall in love with them. So we're gonna compose our own scene. So we're gonna learn how to real quick sketch out basic body types for both characters. And then we're gonna to jump to our piece of paper that we're gonna finish our art on. Mine's gonna be a black piece of paper and we're gonna do colored pencil. You can use whatever you want. I suggested half tone. And then we're gonna compose our scene that way. So we're gonna to try to get as much done. We're not gonna finish this drawing all in one shot because it's gonna take a bit. But the idea is to get a good portion down, start working with colored pencil and then finish it for next time. So Mr. Wizard, let us roll tape, please. All right, so Pepe Le Pew and Penelope, to understand those cartoons and what Chuck did was by another famous actor and I forget what his name is, not yet. So yeah, the whole point of that one is uh, what I loved about um, the role rehearsal. Yes, uh, Oliver. It was Charles Boyer. That's it. Yes. That's who they modeled that whole like scene after. It was like a satire. So um, I love that they switch roles and all of a sudden, you know, what you think might be repulsive, like in a skunk and is all of a sudden attractive because you don't see the skunk part. And then yeah, she's an attractive cat and then she gets all wet and then the roles reverse. What? Make ice yeah, water. daddy's gonna teach. So Aiden will get you the pizza. And now everybody knows. Now everybody knows. Aiden, can you get them the pizza, please? All right, there you go, people. Pizza. French pizza today. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do a um, a scene based off that, right? And we're gonna learn that we're just gonna sketch real quick body types for each one so that we can understand their anatomy. And then we're gonna go ahead and compose our own scene. So 
there's some super nifty things. They have these character sheets from Warner Brothers in the 90s. And we're gonna start with, we're gonna start with this dude right here because this kind of gives us the easiest body type, right? And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit so that you can see this. And then all we're gonna do is sketch real light. So kind of an easy thing to understand about as my text messaging keeps going off about Pepe Le Pew is if we were to do a circle for the head, which is kind of like right here and his eyes, in this case, this is where his eyes would rest. His nose kind of comes in the middle, but he's got this oval and that oval kind of comes where the eye line is. So we do this oval. We will see about Penelope as Penelope is almost as like a Lola or a Bugs as far as her anatomy and how it's kind of made up. And then just like little angles on the side. So if we were to do Pepe real quick, again, we're just drawing this, right? We got this, we've got eyes and they kind of go, his eyes are pretty big. All right, and in the skunk part of things, his ears, Again, super quick, right? And then look at his body type. So I wanna say he's about three and a half heads, which means if we were to take circles and do one, two, three, and then his feet are half. So kind of where his rib cage is, is where the second circle would be. So if I were to do like three circles, actually three and a half, right? So his rib cage would kind of be like right here. And then his waist, like his torso ends kind of right there. So that's all we, and look at the kind of the hourglass or the pear shape where it comes out a little bit down and, and around. So we go out, in and underneath. Not where all the legs go down, but there we go. Okay, so it's kind of pear shaped. And then his legs from his hips And then you got his feet, right? So kind of simple, his arms. So notice, come down about here. They're not super long, although, you know, if we were to stretch this out like we do in cartoons, um, we can make them longer but for intensive purposes of just getting his base anatomy down. All right, so there's his base anatomy. We'll get the white part in the middle and then his big old tail so his tail is essentially the size of him which is pretty big all right and then there we go all right so easy enough right real quick sketch right there and maria welcome from peru seriously are you watching from peru that's pretty awesome um so there we go that's his sketch now we know it three and a half heads tall and then you know we got that big tail so we kind of know what to expect we're going to switch before i switch who's if anybody's not done yet and needs an extra minute just raise a if you're on screen raise a physical hand or just put up a the little digital hand if you need like another minute. And if you're good, we're gonna move on. All right, I don't see anybody, let's move on. So, we're gonna do Penelope. Now for Penelope, I'm gonna go with this, right? Cause this is kind of the pose that we're going for, um, or that kind of look, right? That whole, just like we saw at the end of the film, all right, so now with her, if you look on this sheet, she's three and a half heads also. And you see you've got like one head here, the next one comes down and is essentially her chest down to about her rib cage, which is the same thing on Pepe. And then that second circle, that second headline comes right down to the waist, right? And then you have her feet and her tail's not as big as his, but it's, it's pretty decent size. So we're gonna do this. And now if you notice with her head, so I'm gonna, there we go. 
we'll start with a small circle and then we've got her eyes that kind of come diagonally this way and then she's got more of that bugs ish like cheeks and stuff so all i'm going to do is I, it's kind of like almost an oval again underneath comes out and her nose is right there in the middle and then you've got her eyes which are pretty big in this one All right, again, we're doing this guy, this pose right here. And then the, only, the, the main difference is like, if I were to do Bugs or Lola, um, the ears would obviously be, be much bigger, right? But I'm not, so that, that other than that, that's why the anatomy on Penelope reminds me of like Bugs or Lola. All right, so there we go. Piece of cake, all right. And then remember, we're like three and a half heads. So if I did this as one, which comes down to her chin, I'd go two, three, and then a half. All right, kind of looks like a snowman. Do you want to build a snowman? No, I don't. And I don't like that movie. Why? It just annoys me. I don't understand the character development. That's all. To me, it looks... To me, it looks like a caterpillar that's been chopped in half. You're right. You know what? All right. So speaking, like in Mario Brothers, it reminds me of the Mario Brothers caterpillar. You know that Yoshi the dog, dog caterpillar. Uh, thing. yes. All right. So we've got hands. Now notice, like hands on the cheek. So all I'm going to do is I've got little rectangles here. I've got. Oh yeah. The bring the elbow down. The Mario cactus, that's the one, yes. Yeah, those are cool. Those are cool. All right. So we've got her body here. Now, this is out, down, and around. So it's kind of like a pear shape. Remember, like, this is my kind of cutoff line because um, this is where her the, the waist is and, like, that hip joint. And then... If I bring this all the way up. So she's got an arm coming this way. And we'll do the white part of her stomach here. And then that way we can get this. And her, her hips start up a little bit higher on the one side. You got the little knees. Um. Yes, sir. So I was. Well, um. So I was. I was gonna say probably the funniest part about that about that cartoon we watched. Yes. Um. Uh. Was um. When the when Penelope Pussycat was making cat noises, it was like love you, love you, <laughs> love her. Yes. <laughs> I think I, I, I think those parts are hilarious and she does that in just about every film. All right, so there's our real quick Peppy and Penelope. We'll put some eyes on Peppy so that he's not just a zombie looking thing. All right, so there's our Peppy and Penelope, right? There's kind of the real quick how we sketch that out. Hold on one second. Okay, so this is our kind of setup for how we're gonna work this. So we can see that the characters are fairly similar, right? They're both three and a half heads tall. Um, Peppy's probably got a little uh, more of a boxed in cheeks where hers are a little rounder, you know, kind of like, um, like I said, like bugs. So we wanna do our own scene. So this is, this is it, everybody good? Let's switch to our, our main paper. So this is not my main paper. I'm gonna get my main paper out. All right, we've got this whole giant sheet. And what I'm gonna do is switch to my, I've got my blue line pencil I'm gonna be sketching with. That way I can get my lines down pretty, pretty easy and pretty light. 
and we're going to start with the scene. So I want a vertical piece because I'm going to have something where maybe she's stepping on a chair and he's down below, right? So like she's on a pedestal or something up, or maybe she's on the counter um, or something like, or a drawer is open. Let's, let's go with, let's go with that. So I'm going to start with Peppy's head and I'm going to do Peppy about, so if I have my sheet of paper here and this is my halfway point, he's his, the top of his head sitting on the bottom of the halfway point. All right, and I'm just going to, just gonna rub this in. Now he's gonna be looking straight at the camera on this. All right, and if we want reference again for him, I'm gonna put this right next to it, okay? So this can be our reference for that. And then you can see all the heads even of like Peppy right here. It's gonna be more of this kind of look right that dejected look because he's being doused so and then he may have kind of the eyes like this yes so here's the start right and then i've got got a oval that comes down a little further and his cheeks are pretty big all right and that's it that's 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 where we're starting so now I want like that, I want that pose as if he's getting totally soaked and his shoulders are kind of down so that he's hanging down, which means his shoulders won't be up as much. And so we've got one head here. So if I'm gonna take my pencil, take my pencil, I'm gonna measure it out. I'm gonna say that's one head, that's two heads, that's three heads, and that's about a half, all right? So I just loosely measured it out with my pencil and that might even seem like a little big, even for me, as far as how that stretches out. Let's see, one, that's about right, two, yeah, all right. Looks bigger than it is. So, it means his chest kind of comes down right about here. All I want to do on Pepe is his, his shoulders are going to hang lower. So, you notice on here, he's got a little happier, shoulders are up. I'm going to have the shoulders come down because his cheeks are going to droop. All right, and again, I'm, we're gonna go just for the blocking. I'm not gonna put in a ton of detail right now. And we've got that, again, that hour, that pear-shaped hourglass style figure that we're gonna. That we're gonna use, so. Goes like so. And then his hips come out to where his knees, his knees you kind of see match up with the bottom right here of his waist. All right, so just roughed in. And I want his arms kind of hanging down, like his shoulders are down, his arms are down. And let's have his, maybe his hands at his side, but it's, he's got that kind of like, ew, gross, like what's happening to me? There we go. All right, again, super easy roughed in. And then his tail is, while it's big and bushy here, it's not gonna be in this, cause it's gonna be drenched. So we're gonna do just some rough blocking on his tail. All right, there we go. So he's just getting drenched. And then too, like his ears, his ears are gonna kind of be down, like, like think of like a sad dog. So his ears are down. His hair, instead of like being that big quaffed up on front, maybe is down. All right, and then his, his eyes. So his nose kind of comes right in the middle of this. So we'll pop his nose in.
There we go, and we'll give that kind of frowny face. And then we'll do this with his eyes. We'll just kind of have his eyelids hanging low. There we go. All right. Sad clown right there. Feet. We'll get these little feet in. Okay. So that's the start, right? It's super roughed in right now. It's not, we haven't really added any detail to it. We're just kind of given the overall pose. Now on this, we want to switch to Penelope. So we're going to go, she's going to be pouring this on his head. Now, if I want to reference, and by the way, reference, reference, reference. There's nothing wrong with reference. Reference is great. It kind of gives us an idea of the characters and what they look like, how they operate. Um, so I'm going to say maybe in a pose, like you can kind of see from a side view, like what she looks like here, you know, and, and even this pose right here. But I'm going to go with I'm going to go with that or, or this one. And I'm going to say she's on a. I'm not going to put the ledge in yet, but she's over here and just dumping a massive bottle of perfume on him because he stinks. He's a skunk. All right. So if I've got this as my main, I've got her kind of looking down a little bit so that she can see what she's doing. And she's, she also has kind of that pear shape to her body a bit. Now I wanna give her that, so Scott, come back to me real, real quick. So remember like you're doing referencing, like well, how does that look? Well, you get like a family member or something to pose, but I want her like dumping this big old bottle. So if she's facing the camera, like if I'm, if I'm you right now and I'm facing the camera, I want this, I want this ring. Okay. And now if I notice like my back shoulder, so if she's holding this, the arm in front, her, my right arm, right? The arm in front as she's doing this would, would be, um, we'll show that. And then we're going to do this kind of giant oval of where it is because she's going to be holding this giant bottle like this, which means this shoulder, her left hand shoulder is going to be up closer to kind of her ear. And this one's going to drop down more. And then she's got this bend in her spine. So let's go back to this. And what I want to show with that is all I'm going to do here is I'm going to start with kind of my spine line. Hopefully you can see that. Right. And again, I've got a shoulder dropping here and then I've got a, it higher up here. So we've got this big kind of, hopefully, can you see that all right? Scott, can you see that or does it kind of wash out? I can see it. It's a little washed out, but I can see washed it. Out. Okay, sorry. Let's see if we can get a little bit better there. So I've got this kind of oval, right? And then this gives me an idea of shoulders and then I've got her back. So if I'm doing like one, so let's get her, let's get her nose in here. Again, it's, it's kind of a little bugs that she's got this big grin on her face. Um, and then we'll get her cheeks in. And she's got like the back of her head that kind of comes up again, just like bugs. And we're going to get her eyes. She's her eyelids are kind of like halfway down too. And she's got eyelid or eyelashes, which we'll put in a little bit there. All right. And then her eyebrows, she's got just the cute little cat ears. All right, and then this cat ear over here. Okay, so that, uh, that gives me an idea of her head. And then I, un, I can understand from there, like one, because her shoulder's right here, so like one, two, and then three and a half. So my, my feet are almost down there, which works. So her shoulder's coming up over her back. And dude, do not use the fart gun right now. No, no we're not using the fart gun, daddy's on TV. Go put the fart gun away, please. Sweet mercy. All right, anyway, back to the show. So we've got her, 
her arm and it's holding this bottle, right? This big jug. And so we're gonna go ahead and put this jug, this big bottle of perfume. We can make it ornate too. It doesn't have to just be a, like a Costco sized, um, a Costco sized bottle of perfume. So we're gonna put, we're gonna rough the jug in. All right, and what I want is, I want the spout for this to, the, the nozzle to, we're gonna see about perspective too. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it pouring out this way. So I'm gonna change my perspective a little bit. And there we go. Yeah, you can use the fart gun sound effects during class. That's fine. If you have the if you have the minions fart gun, um, first of all, I would be totally impressed. Second of all, you might as well use it since my kids are using it. I I don't currently have that, but I will definitely have it by next class. Uh, yes, please do. It's I I mean it's worth it. I'll I'll just say that right now. The the fart gun's worth it. It is hilarious, and we do use it frequently. I am. What I'm doing is I'm drawing Pepe Le Pew in a gas mask. Nice. All right, now I want- He's so stinky. He is, he is stinky, but that's like, so what I wanna do is I'm gonna have like stuff pouring out, right? And it's splashing. I've got splash marks, you know, like little things here and, and it is just running down. So I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have drips and drops all all running down peppy right he's just getting drenched in this we'll put some drops coming off him there maybe there's one off his fingertips right so she's just pouring it on and i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to i'm going to bring up her arm a little bit since her shoulders right here T, you used to have one and then you got rid of it. And why on earth would you get rid of something like that? It's hilarious. All right. So I've got, see if I have her holding that bottle, maybe I want the arm coming down just a little bit more. And then she's maybe holding on to it with a thumb here. There we go. All right, so that makes a little bit more sense. She's holding on to it with a thumb and we'll give her side view here, which comes up underneath. And she's got, we'll kind of bump out a bit back here. Okay. And she's kind of bracing herself. So we'll give We'll give her feet and then maybe they're hanging over the, maybe they're hanging over a little bit. There we go. Okay. And then her tail. So obviously nothing's wrong with this one, right? Her tail. And now that I'm looking at it, maybe my anatomy is just a little bit off because her head's going to look real big. I'm going to fix this because that doesn't look right. So her tail is going to be bigger in kind of like in a happier pose, right? All right, there there we go. I think that feels a little bit better. There, it feels better. Okay, so we got her feet. So this will be the edge, right? Her foot's hanging over a little bit. And then for the tail, what I'm gonna recommend is something kind of like in this mode except for a little higher up. So we're just gonna rough it in to start. And I'll probably, I'll give her more of like a curvier tail, like rounder lines, right? Cause it's a friendly character, rounder lines, friendly character. There we go. All right, something to that effect, right? We'll, we'll clean up a little bit and figure that out. You can kind of see what it looks like here. Um, 
but that's that's the rough end now i'm going to give a back to this ledge and then i'm going to say like on this shelf like i'm gonna have a shelving system in the back and we'll have these bottles of these bottles of perfume as a matter of fact i think that's too low so we'll we'll give maybe we'll have a taller bottle back here of perfume right we'll only show like the half of the bottle on this side and then uh yeah okay so there's the rough good night man we only have 20 minutes left does that make sense so we kind of we fixed a couple of problems again when i'm going through and i'm drawing your and you're watching all this happen live um sometimes i'm doing something that's maybe i'm seeing it's not working as well it's a little shorter just erase go back over it and start again um, or just erase that part and and fix it erasers are our friends most of the time okay so i'm gonna say i don't really need anything in the background here other than maybe there's a maybe there's a little bit of a wall like we can kind of see where the baseboard is to this all right and that gives us an idea of closeness so he's closer to this countertop you know that's going in and then maybe because it's france and they're fancy so maybe we have like some maybe we have like these panels you know and then we'll give another panel here Maybe they go out just a little bit further and then they've got that ornate kind of carpentry. All right, there we go. All right, again, roughed in. It's just roughed in. And the nice part about that is we'll go back and add our details here in a little bit. Okay, that's a quick sketch. I'll be ready to get into the nitty gritty. So if you've watched any of these before, you know that I am a big fan, especially when we're doing colored pencil work, of Prismacolor premieres. And I finally got a carrying case for all my colored pencils, and it's gigantic. But that's because there's 200 colored pencils in here. So what I'm going to recommend is we're going to start with a gray and the reason why I want to start with a gray is because we're going to kind of map out the character a little bit. Um, we're going to do a warm gray. So in my in my book of colored pencils, uh, we're going to go warm gray. Now there is a French gray, which would be hilarious because we're working on something French. You know what? That's what we're going to do. We're going to do a French gray. And I'm going to use a number 70. 70% 70 French gray. And I want to start kind of tying this down a little bit further. So getting back to my piece here, um, and then I might bring this bottle, actually, I'm going to bring this, bring this bottle up behind and it's, it'll go in front of her tail. So her tail is behind that. And maybe we got like a little ring on there because maybe it's like a gold plated ring. Cause this again is super fancy. And then we'll give a label to it. Maybe we'll name that label later. We'll call it, here? Um, yeah, in one second. Let's roll this. Lay oh, seven. What's that? That was going to be entirely different than what you're drawing, so I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, Scott is right. It's lay 70% French gray. All right, so... The nice thing about working in like a Prismacolor premiere, and I don't really need my style sheet next for this, is you can layer it, right? So in this, now I'm gonna I'm gonna use the black and the paper as a base, because obviously they're skunk, so it's black and white. And what I want to do is I'm going to have stuff coming over like this perfume and I'm not going to have it go in his eyeballs because that would sting, but I'm going to get the idea of just the beginning shapes. So underneath his hair underneath is um, black. His hair on top is white, right? And so we're going to just, we're going to mat this down. And again, because I'm using 
like the a Prismacolor Premier. Uh, it's it's sounds fancy. It just a, it's a better waxed. It's a soft core, which is what you want when you're doing this because it allows you to blend. Where if you have a harder core pencil, you can't blend as much, and it gets, um, it gets very, it just gets very hard to do. He deserves pain into the eyeballs. He does. So you, are you talking about like the red and white lines? T, is that what you're saying? You're gonna have to show me what pain in the eyeballs means. All right. And then his nose is black also. So I'm just outlining a little bit here, right? There, there is a like a highlight spot on his nose. So I've got that in here. And then what I want to do, um, because his muzzle's white, so so Pepe's got this. Um, he's got this around his eyes, and think of like that certain mouse from that other network, right? If you know how to draw that other Tom, mouse. Tom and Jerry. No, 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 no. The Mickey other. Mouse. Yep. Sniffles. No, no, no. You were right with you were right with Mickey. So uh, what we want to do is his eyebrows and stuff are in the white part, and he's got this little peak, like a widow's peak, right here. And this actually comes around. So Tater said, you said you weren't going to have the perfume going to his eyeballs because it would hurt. That's what he was referencing. With oh, oh, yes. Pain in the eyeballs. That makes sense. Yeah, we don't want to do that. Like that would suck. So we're just going to have it kind of dripping off like his ears. And then maybe there we go, kind of, I mean, he's getting drenched. So what I want to do is once I've kind of got this main part down with my Le French Gray. Thank you, Scott. And I'm going to, I'm going to get a little bit more and then I've got his shoulders. All right, so again, I can come back and um, if I'm going to use Pepe's style sheet real quick, er, so you can kind of see how, how his physical shape goes. Um, we just kind of bring that up like so. And his, I need to drop his hips a little bit there. There we go. I'm I'm doing mine with a Maurice Noble style background. Ooh, excellent. Maurice Noble is one of my all-time favorites. You know, to keep it unreal. Yes. All right. So even I though I oh What's that? even even though I am a huge fan of realistic backgrounds in cartoons. Uh, he had more unrealistic. Backgrounds. Yes. Well, he, but if you look at what Maurice Noble did and how he did it, he would, I'm going to go in with white and I'm going to go ahead and start to shade in, um, and start to shade in part of this in, in the inner interior with white. So if you notice what Maurice did, he was a master draftsman and he would, he would practice from real life stuff. So a lot of those wacky designs and stuff that he did was based off yes yeah, scott very stylized um was based off kind of real stuff and he was a, a phenomenal draftsman so if you ever get the book a noble approach if you check that out from the library or i just bought it i mean i didn't just buy it i bought it not checked it out um it's a phenomenal book and he's got a lot of what he what he learned in there and how he would apply that to cartoon backgrounds and i think I think the Roadrunner Coyote backgrounds that he did are some of the most iconic art pieces. And if you look at how he did it, um, and then the actual like Monument Valley and stuff like that from Arizona, um, it's pretty phenomenal what he was able to accomplish. But I'm also doing a bit of like a Pink Panther style Ooh, backwards. All right. All right. Yeah, Lilian and Heather Rose. So if you guys get a chance to ask your brother if you can borrow that because it's, it's a pretty stellar book. All right, and then we're gonna get some, get the little part there and I'll, I'll fill that back in here in a second. I just wanna make sure I know where his, the iris is 
or his pupil, not his iris, his pupil. All right. Oh, look at that. Sad sack. Come on. You can already see it coming together. So now what I'm going to do is I don't like doing, and this is just a personal preference when I'm doing colored pencil um, or in a, in a particular when I'm doing um, the oil paint, when I paint in oils and the style that I use for that, I don't like to outline like you would see in like a cell or something like that, where you'd have like a, an outline of a stroke of the character, you know, so you would do it in a stroke. I like to use the, um, the natural lines, just like you would find in real life and use that to delineate between shapes. So I won't do like a solid hard white line or something here and then fill it in. I'll, I'll shade from there on and I'll use shading to separate between spaces. All right, now, as we get this down and we start, I, I, what I'll do is I'll very lightly go in um, and I'll just, I'll just start to like very lightly put stuff down. You wanna build layers, that's what you wanna do. Now I've gone over that line that I did in my Le French Gray and that's okay, cause I'll come back and I'll, I'll use that as a guide when I'm shading. And actually, I can probably make his nose a little bit bigger. So I've got these cheeks that come down. And I, I want them to hang a little bit, you know, like that, just like we saw in that last cartoon where she's drenched and her cheeks are hanging down. Well, that's what we're going to do with Peppy. He's going to get a little bit of that same, same look. So I'm just going to, again, I'm it, it's super light. And it just looks like a bunch of scribbles and that's okay. Because I'm going to layer this and if I and if you've seen any of the other colored pencil drawings that I've done, um, you know how it comes out and it's a smoother blended line. Um, I don't think I have any examples here because they've all been shipped out but you kind of get the idea. All right, so I've, I've got this down. I understand where this is going. Um, there's nothing else on him that's white other than this part of his tail. So if I if I just do a rough outline of like he's got two stripes that run down the middle like that. And the rest of his tail is black. So I've mapped that out. I've got kind of that you can't even really see the ear on this side too much. Um, We'll just kind of brush that in. And then what I'll do is to blend, I've, I've got my white down. Now I want to go down and I'm going to pick a, I'm going to do this in a warm gray and I'm going to go with 20% warm. I'm going to sharpen it up too. Here's another trip, uh, tip. When you're coloring and you're getting into maybe where you're doing some more detailed work and you want to, you want to, like a, a rounded tip if it's a little further up is great for just getting general color down but as you start to get in more detailed the the sharper i have the the pencil the better it works for me when i'm blending so if i just want to get down my base color it's fine to lay warm gray yes lay warm it's good if i round a tip but for this kind of stuff when i get into it All right, my camera's shaking a little bit. And so I'll put this down and what I can do here is I can push and pull, meaning I can, I can push my darks in and pull up my whites a little bit and my highlights. So that is what I'm gonna accomplish here in one second and I will show you how that works. All right, again, you got to think in three dimensions, like three dimensionally, right? So he's got these. It's going to be brighter on the top. So my highlights are going to be up here. And then I'm going to just. I'm going to pencil that in a little bit harder so that I know where that line is, because this 
here is going to be a little darker underneath and then I'm going to have it shaded underneath his nose. For that, I'm going to use my Le Warm Gray 70%. Le Warm Le Mew. Uh, I have not watched What If today. I did watch the last Bad Batch as we have six minutes left. T, T, I'm super excited about what's about to happen. I got a feeling that this ties into what happens in The Mandalorian. Unmute yourself and please agree with me. All right, I'm there really we go. stoked. Right? So cool. I can't and believe I can't even happened. talk about it because it's such a spoiling moment. Ah. It is. It is a very spoiling moment, which is why we will not discuss it here in case anyone hasn't watched it. But yeah, I, I've been trying to get my brother to re um to watch um the rest of the episodes with me, but he was just like super fussy. Yeah, you just gotta watch it. So I finally watched the rest of them today. I caught up. And uh, so now I, I'm in episode 15, which is the first part of the, uh, who's, you're, yeah, all right, so we won't spoil it for Scott either. I'm, I was only on episode 12, or 12. I finally caught up to episode 15. And I, I, I think, and T, this doesn't give anything away because we're not discussing that. I think, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, this leads into some Mandalorian style revelations with little Grogu and stuff like that, about that whole process of things. Would you agree or would you disagree? Or would you say, I have a different opinion? Uh, I'm not sure. It's a possibility, but eh. Maybe, I don't know. I, I just, I'm not quite sure. I was happy to see you know who join back up with you know what. I'm like, you can't just, you know, I won't say anything. All right, so there's there's kind of like where I'm sitting with this. Um, I'm going to bring the shading under. And again, the great thing about a soft core colored pencil, all right, I cannot stress enough if you're going to do stuff like this using a soft core colored pencil, is the ability to, to blend. Now, I'm, and I realize my light might seem a little hard to see at the moment, but what's great, and here we go. So I'm going to pull up my highlight, right? And even though I'm going over with white, and over that 20% lay gray, lay warm gray, I can go back over this white and I can shade that down a little bit if I need to. That's what I love about these things is the ability, it, it treats it like paint. And, and for me, it treats it like oil paint. That's why I love these colored pencils. All right, so you can see, right? We got some highlights. We get some on here too, on the top of his head for his hair and all right. So we're kind of starting with that. He looks a little, a little rough. He's soaked in perfume. Give him a little bit more underneath. And again, as I said, there's no way we're gonna be able to finish this thing in time. Uh, I mean, just look at how much I've only gotten finished. Uh, this is gonna take me a bit longer. I'm going to go back with a 10% warm gray, kind of blend that up a little bit. And then I've got that smile line that I did right here. And I'm going to go back and just continue to add some shadows. And we'll give them that kind of bottom lip a little bit. And then I'll go back with my 70%. Now two is a little kind of trick that I do. So I don't, I like to have a little highlight underneath when I'm doing shadows. And if you look at shadows on, you know, your arms or wherever, you'll notice that there's sometimes like a little highlight. Now my color of choice, this is gonna be a shocker. My color of choice for highlights underneath is, drum roll please, teal. And what I'll do is I will I like to do this to kind of show like an, a cool under light. And I don't mean cool like awesome. I mean cool like in tone, right? So that gives me a little bit of distinction between what I have going on top and bottom. This is my favorite color to do um, highlights with that are on the opposite side of my lighting. All right, so we've got this kind of coming down. I'm gonna real quick use black 
and do his nose. Just to kind of finish this part or finish this part of his face off anyway. And I don't want it to be two dimensional. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the highlight, right? And then if you can see, I'm going to go ahead and blend that in. So I might go over that with the black and then I'm going to come back in, and just pull my highlight up like that. And again, the underneath of his nose, right? We got this. I want to have that kind of cool under effect lighting because I want to show that his nose is dimensional, three dimensional, and I'll just blend and fade that up. And that is the beginning to our role reversal for Pepe Le Pew and Penelope. I'm going to finish this piece. When? I'll have it done by next week and I will show you. I would oh, highly okay. encourage you if you have it. I have, oh, well, I have this so far. All right, Scott, I'm going to let you, do, I'm going to let Scott run around the table and let's see everybody's stuff. Let's start with Oliver. Well, um, I have this so far. I'm not finished. <laughs> nice. But um, it's him in a gas mask, um, and there's a bunch of um, uh, perfume bottles, and I wanted to go with like a really bad um, background, because that's what they use in like Pink Panther cartoons, and, and yeah. what Murray's Noble would do, like with really like simplistic backgrounds. Love it. Yes, they did. They did because Maurice Noble did that so that the background would not take over the attention of what was going on in the main action. So we always wanted the backgrounds to complement and never like overtake what was going on in front. Um, let's go to who's next. Scott, you're running. Don't see any hands yet. All right, Nathaniel. Oh, Peter. All right, T. And then Nathaniel wanted to show. All right, T. Hello. Um, another digital piece. Another painted sketch. Uh, I, I really like the scene in the beginning where he was going through all the perfume. So I tried to do something like that. Um, wait, hold on. My, my screen keeps on cutting out. Are you serious? Hold on. I can't. Um, yeah. Wait, no, leave it up there. I can't get my screen, screen to switch. Hold on a second. Hold all on. Right. Hold on. Scott, my, my machine is going nuts here, buddy. Um, don't move, T. All right, now let's let's get this back in action here because I need to see this piece. Shut up, T. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's, I quit. that's what I got. You're teaching next week. All right. No. Yeah, yeah, you're teaching. I think I that's can't. awesome. So you've got a great pose down. Uh, you've got, I love the lighting source so I can easily tell where you're lighting this thing from. You've got a very interesting pose and your composition is great. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, where are we going next? Who's next? Me. Nathaniel's next. Nathaniel. <laughs> All right, tell me what you got going on. It's the chrome dinosaur. <laughs> That's so cool. Wait, there's more. Nice. Did you do that all just now? Yes. Of course. And I did. added shading. Nice. Nice tune squad. Get up, by the way. Thank you. All right. There you go. <laughs> That's why I'm in black and white. I, hey, it works, dude. It totally works. Way to theme out. Just guess. Just guess. All right, so would anybody else like to roll before we go? I'll give it like two seconds. If you do, pop it in the chat. Um, if not, no worries. So uh, great crowd today. I hope in some of this like compose, taking characters, breaking them down into very digestible shapes, right? So that we can understand body proportion uh, worked when we were just doing little thumbnails of the characters and main poses. And then doing something that was in a scene that was all of your own. So we can redraw like what we see, like we can take the model sheet and just redraw that and color, you know, and, and do some shading and coloring on that fine. But I think even more um, is taking it and then creating our own scene and sequence to it. So 
understanding the anatomy and then how to bend that into the ways that make sense. I think you guys did a great job on that. Um, T, um, is, T is teaching next week. Yes. Um, uh, so I had a question. What cartoon are we um, referencing from next week? Uh, what cartoon are we referencing next week? Mm -hmm. I will tell you in one second. Um, we are referencing uh, Super Rabbit. So oh. Super Rabbit is Super Rabbit is next week. Super Rabbit is going to be uh, either ink and marker or colored pencil. I'm not exactly sure which one yet. I'm leaning toward ink and marker. So, um, or actually yes. uh, leaning toward colored pencil because we're gonna do something like in Batman the Animated Series where they worked in dark drawings or dark paper and then they pulled their backgrounds out using uh, color, but they started with like black paper. So uh, go ahead. Well, I was thinking maybe one of the cartoons we should do is One Froggy Evening or Duck Amok. I, so I thought about Duck Amok. There's a reason why I'm doing this and then um, why I'm doing Robin Hood Daffy at the end. But maybe we'll change up Robin Hood Daffy to do a Duck Amok because there's a really good sequence in there when he when Bugs draws him up. I might switch that out. One Froggy Evening is good as well. Um, so we'll figure that out. But taking these characters, apply it to a composition of your own, and then lighting it and coloring that. And I think T kicked my butt and did something even faster than I did. So um, my name is Ardbark. That's my phone. Yes. So anyway, do, uh, I hope you have a great week. Catch. Um, we've got Mike Bunt on tomorrow. And then I'm back next week with the rabbit. So I hope you guys have a great, uh, great week. Keep going. Keep drawing and finish this stuff. I'll finish mine and then show me what you did by next week. T's probably already done by now. All right, guys, have a great one. We'll see you, see you next time. Thank you, bye. Bye, everyone.